Hi right, guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, for those of you returning, thank you very much. For those of you who are new, my name's Andrew and I'm lead look development artist at Rising Sun Pictures and I also run this channel, AJ3D VFX. Um, today's topic is going to be anchor points. Um, they are super, super powerful and one of my favorite features of Substance Painter. So we'll cover um, yeah, what is an anchor point? How do we use them daily? And um, at the end, I'll show you a couple of like abstract tricks um, that you can do with them um, and a few things that are, yeah, we just stumbled across that are really, really cool. So um, uh, yeah, and what better way to demonstrate that than um, on this model of an anchor? Yeah, my dad jokes are starting to kick in now. <laughs> um, so before we dive into this and um, I've got a material kind of set up with a whole bunch of anchor points, we'll, we'll start simple. Um, so we'll just jump over to the tiling sample scene and um, just show you the absolute basics. So what is an anchor point? Um, an anchor point basically is a way to reference a single layer's information higher up in the layer stack. Um, and this is super useful and super powerful for all sorts of reasons. Um, but just straight up, let's just start by making an anchor point and referencing it into a new layer. So I've got a just a flat fill layer here and an empty paint layer. Just going to paint something on our tiling material. And I'm going to create an anchor point for this layer. So the way we do this is we right click on the layer that we want. And down the very bottom is add anchor point. So we're going to create that. And you can see what it's done. Um, we've got this little icon with an anchor here and it's copied the layer name um, and already named that as our anchor point. But you could rename this to something more specific if you wanted to uh, now or later on. So, so that's the anchor point created. Um, this references section here will tell you later on once we've linked it up to another layer what layers it's linked to. So say if you use this layer to link against 10 other layers, there should be 10 listings here to tell you actually what it's doing. So, so that's the basic step one. So step two, let's, let's read this anchor point just back into another layer. So I'm going to create a new fill layer. Um, I'm just going to turn all of this stuff off. And in the base color, let's just say I want this uh, anchor point to fill the base color. So we can select this and over here, there's this tab called anchor points. And you'll see now that um, this anchor point is showing up and you'll even see here on the side when I hover my mouse over it, it's actually highlighting the layer um, that the anchor is located. And that's super useful, especially when you've got a complex layer stack like we'll see later on. So I'll select this. And that's basically essentially like copied the layer um, that we have underneath. Um, and when I say copied the layer, um, you can kind of see um, it's giving us a couple of options um, for like the channel that we want to reference. Um, so we could reference just uh, say like the height, uh, roughness, metallic, uh, like an individual channel. Uh, gives us control over the alpha, how we want to handle the alpha as it's referenced back up into this new layer and also give us some levels controls um, directly on the, the, the link. So we can, we can remap this quickly without having to drop another levels node down or something like that. So, so that basically is, um, yeah, that's the very basics of creating a simple anchor point. Now let's jump in uh, back to the anchor model and I'll show you um, how I use it through basically masking is kind of the primary use that you'll you'll use this for most of the time, like nine times out of 10, it'll be for some sort of masking, um, but you can do other cool stuff with it, which we'll, we'll uh, jump into at the end. Alrighty, so now that we're back onto our anchor model, um, I'll walk you through the layer stack that I have here um, step by step so you can see um, how I'm using anchor points. And um, I've tried to, a lot of this stuff you probably could do different ways. I've just hammed up um, using anchors <laughs> as much as possible just to, 
to help you guys out, to try and get to grips with how to use them and, and demo them. So um, the first thing I've done is uh, applied a flat material uh, just with some height detail. Um, so you'll see this is a 4K single tile as well. So just give it a second. So you can see the first layer is just real basic stuff. The, the model's quite simple. I modeled it in like an hour or two. <laughs> so um, the model's really simple. There's no sculpts, no nothing. So I've added this just to, to top up some of the very base detail. And we're going to use this um, later on to uh, tie into with the actual paint and masking and that sort of thing. So, so that's the first step. Um, I have a logo here as well, which um, I will cover just after this first step. So um, I've got this steel painted material called Enable. And you can see here that's pretty, pretty standard. I've just used uh, one of the factory smart materials, but I've got some, some masking happening here um, to kind of desaturate this lower area and I've um, anchored that for later on, but let's, let's just go from the, the very start. So I've got all of this off. Okay, so it's the base, basic paint layer of a very basic dirt layer. We have some occlusion based dirt um, using the mask builder. Um, you know, some edge scratches, and then finally, this is the color correct to desaturate and kind of make this lower area green. Um, you know, it's, it's probably in the water, it's like that bit would start to wear first, I would imagine. I haven't really thought too much about real anchors, <laughs> so um. So that's all pretty standard stuff. Now where this starts to get interesting, for example, is let's say I have a logo um, that I want to put on there. So I'll turn this on. Now you can see I've got this logo here. Andy's Anchor Company. <laughs> so the way that um, I've got this set up at the moment is that, let's turn this off. Turn this off and turn on the original artwork. It's actually on the other side. Cool. So here's the, the artwork, um, the logo with some IDs separated out. So I've got the text in red and the ring in green. No alpha, no nothing. It doesn't have to be too fancy. I actually prefer working with logos and stuff this way. Now. What I've done is I've got two, I need uh, two sides, obviously, so the logo can be on both sides. And um, the way I've done this is this is just a flat layer with the artwork inserted just in the color. And then just like we did before, I've made a, a new fill layer and I'm set an anchor point on here and I'm um, referencing it back up on another channel, um, just using the base color. And really I'm doing that so that um, I can get the logo on both sides. So turn this off, you can see. So the one on this side is being referenced from the original. Um, and there's a reason why I've done, done it this way and I'll show you why. So if we jump over to our UV view, so here's the UVs, we'll just jump into the color view and we can see now, so the way I've placed the logo is using the um, transform tools, just like a 2D transform in here. But if I move this, now these both move together. So let's say I wanted the logo down the bottom I only have to move it once instead of twice. I don't have to worry about lineup issues and things like that. So we jump back to the 3D view. So you can see they've both moved together. <laughs> it's a little bit offset anyway, because my UVs are a bit off, but um, yeah, you get the idea. Um, so that's, that's like a super useful thing and something quite simple, but it's already really uh, wicked. 
using anchors. So we'll, we'll put this back. Now the next step is um, I want to actually run this as height because a lot of these anchors, you know, it's like an iron pressed sort of logo that's in there. It's um, so now we need to use the artwork to create that effect. So um, I can now turn these off and we'll go through to these two layers that I'm using to create that. So the first layer contains the text. Cool. So you can see that's now, now embossed and I've got a bit of sort of scratching out of it and things like that. And it's obviously appearing on, on both sides. So I'll go through the layer stack and how I'm doing this. So this is a fill layer um, with the height set and nothing else. Um, got a blank ID channel there as well in case I need it later. And in the mask, I'm using a fill the same way, um, similar to how we do in the color channels. Um, and then I'm referencing back here and you can see when I hover my mouse over it, um, it tells me which layer it's pulling on. And then I'm selecting the channel I want to use. So in this case, my um, color is plugged, my, sorry, my decal map essentially is plugged into color and I'm referencing the base color. And what I'm doing here as well, you can see this is kind of dropped down. So the way I'm getting just the, the red channel, because I've got the text and the ring as two separate uh, layers because I want different control over them. Um, I'm going in here, selecting uh, red. Yep. I'm pulling that all the way down. Um, oh, sorry, I was on the wrong layer. Apologies. Um, on the red channel, that's all the way up and on the green channel is all the way down. So that basically it just kills the green channel so that I get a mask that looks like this. One problem with doing this though, which is kind of, it's kind of annoying. Um, you have to actually correct the value if you do it this way, um, because the overall luminance drops, it doesn't treat it like just a unique channel. Um, but it's not that much of a problem. You just add a levels after it and that sort of, you can just boost the level back up. It's fine. Um, so I've got two fill layers for the logo and the logo copy. And if I hover my mouse over here, you can see it's referencing against the, um, the other side. So that's, that's how I'm able to combine those two, uh, sides back into one channel. Um, now I'm taking that and I'm blurring it ever so slightly. No, I'm not blurring it at all. It's, it doesn't need to be. And then I'm adding um, just another fill layer um, to add some scratching onto it. Like so. Cool. So just to kind of chew it out so that it's not like Perfect. Yep. Cool. So uh, yeah, it's pretty easy. That's a really useful trick. I use that like quite a bit. Um, so the exact same thing I've done here, but for the ring, um, so you can see here, but in this case, I'm actually doing some extra stuff to it. Um, I'm blurring it to soften the ring out because it was just basically a sharp um, sharp ring turned off. You can see what it's doing. Um, and then same deal. I'm applying just some smolting over a, um, a dirt map just to get a bit of, um, chew from it. So, um, so that basic workflow in itself sort of shows how powerful anchors are because you can, you can just reach back deeper into the, the layer stack, grab something, pull it up and do more things to it without affecting what's happening down here. Now, obviously I could put um, these layers down into the, the base layer as well, and that would go all the way up, but then you'd lose um, sort of levels of control, but it totally doesn't matter. There's not like a right or wrong way or anything. It's whatever the requirement is. So. Um, so that's sort of the first part and that's going to set up what we're going to talk about later. So that's, that's a really simple thing we can do. Now, um, I'll skip this and we'll come back to that in just a second. So 
going to turn the paint back on. Cool. So let's turn the logo back on. And you'll see that in this smart material, there's some edge work that's happening in this edges filter. And I've actually got the logo uh, showing through the mask. It's reading it as if it was like um, baked into the geometry. And the way we can achieve that once again is through anchor points. Um, and this, this ties into the mask editor's uh, micro details map. So um, what I'm doing here, and this is where the pass through layer comes in. And I do this quite a lot where um, I want to flatten all the height into a single channel. And the way I do that is by selecting the height. And then on this flat layer, I just disable all the channels and I set it to pass through. And what that essentially does is it takes anything um, underneath all the height data and flattens it down into one layer. So in Mari, you can think of this like a combine and flat, except in Substance Painter, it's non-destructive. So it's, yeah, it's wicked. I use this all the time. Um, you can see this layer is disabled because it doesn't need to be enabled um, for us to still be able to read up the layer stack. So, so let's go through one. Now this edge where you can see um, down the bottom here, I've got um, under image inputs, there's this micro normal. I'll just remove this for a sec so you can see the effect. Cool. So there's micro normal and micro height. And then we have micro details here. So by default, this is actually turned off and these are left blank as is. So if you wanted to um, include your, and you can see what's happening now. This is this is what would happen if you didn't use this um, technique is you would have this embossed detail, but it's not responding to the smart material. It doesn't realize that there's kind of extrusion detail here. And we want this to be treated as if it was geometry. So the way we can do this is um, we create the, the pass through, drop an anchor on it. And under micro height, we're gonna select uh, height pass through. And then by default, it's gonna be set to base color. So we wanna change that because we're, we're looking at height information. So I'm gonna change this to height, whoops, height. And then lastly, we're going to come up to the micro details tab and under micro height, we're going to turn this on. And now you can see the, the edges and stuff. Um, are all picking up now as if that was geometry. So um, yeah, that's a that's a super useful thing in itself just to be able to do that. And obviously say I didn't want the ring to be included and um, only the text, you could uh, reposition where your anchor was and it can look specifically either at the text or the ring. So really, 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 really useful. Um, so that's cool. And um, just to show something as well, like um, if you were to say, do this same thing in Mari. Um, so this mask that we have here now, um, because I've got everything set up as an anchor, I can, let's say I got feedback from CG Soup and it's like, oh, the logo's in the wrong spot. It needs to be down the bottom at the, like uh, the bell shape here. So that's not, problem with so very quickly we can come back to here we can grab the logo and we can just move it down you'll see this might be a little bit slow yeah you can see what's happening so it's basically it's all live and it's non-destructive and it's just automatically keeping um the detail flowing through so Now, um, yeah, one thing to note, as you can see um, from what's happening is that when you work with anchors, the more anchors you add up the stack, the slower things get. So generally I will try and leave 
these finer detail techniques to last. Um, but for the purposes of this video, it's totally fine. So yeah, so now you can see uh, this has been put down the bottom, all the embossed details there, the other side, even though it's offset, um, has come along for the ride and it's really, really quick. The big thing here is speed um, that we're able to make that change. So um, yeah, so that's cool. All right, cool. So we've reset the logo and we can see that the metal material is, is talking to our decal here. Um, so the next thing I've done is added some rust because we want this to look like an old rusty used anchor. So we've got some rust. So now this is starting to look pretty cool. Now, um, there's a couple of things happening in here that um, sort of make this pop the way it does. So um, once again, using anchors in certain ways, I'm actually able to tie in uh, the detail more specifically to what's happening. So um, it's, it's the same technique as using micro detail. Um, you can see like around all the text, it's actually like, uh, reading that and putting the rust around there and it's following the ring around here um, as well as doing its own thing as it normally would from the data maps that you generate at bake time so we can see once again using this dirt channel I've selected height and then under micro details I have micro height turned on so just to demonstrate how this would look without this input that's what you would get so you can see normally like you'd have to kind of maybe hand paint uh, the rust or the mask back in so that it sat around here, but this way it is fully automatic and you don't have to worry about that. So once again, speed um, anchors really aid in the creation of masks and things like that. And definitely with speed, it's, it's really quick. So, so yeah, so that's cool. So, um, we can see that um, that's all talking to all the height detail underneath, which is, which is great. Um, so all the lumps that we put in initially, uh, we'll just turn these two layers off and go back. You can see this undulation that I put in um, to top up the lack of like model detail or sculpt detail in this case. That's so yeah, perfectly smooth. <laughs> um, so by turning that back on, turn that back on, turn that back on. Cool. So you can see like how much detail we've been able to add um, just texturally and being um, sort of clever in the way that we layer things up and having different material properties talk to each other. Um, I find like that's, that's what really sets uh, Substance Painter apart is the fact that it's so easy to get masks to talk to each other and um, you can see all these little indents have like little bits of rust just naturally occurring in them and like that's that's just wicked in terms of speed and quality um like yeah that's a really wicked amount of detail so um the last thing we'll do is the same deal we'll put some dirt on top and you can see Basically, there's all this sort of pitting detail. And once again, that is all driven from um, grabbing all the height information underneath, flattening it down, adding an anchor point, and then referencing it back, selecting the height channel, going into micro details and turning this on. So I'll demonstrate. So you can see with it turned off, we're not, we're only getting large frequency detail sort of you know, what you typically get. And then when we turn it back on, so you can see all this tiny detail from all the pitting and all the mask, uh, all the material accumulation. Um, just It just adds a whole nother level of detail really quickly. So um, yeah, so that's really wicked. Um, and then this last layer, um, yes, cool. So this last layer is just like, water so you can see um yeah as if we've been in the water or something and i've just basically got a mask like this now um 
Another interesting sort of technique is where I did the discoloration um, in the paint, I'm referencing back that mask, which looks like this um, at this point here, back into a fill at the very top to control a secondary effect. And that is also super useful. So I can actually link up where the discoloration of where this would sit probably the deepest in the water or maybe in the sand or something and that starts to erode the, the paint. Um, I can drive secondary effects off that same mask. So if I was to adjust um, this mask now to, to come up further, so let's just do that. Or we can maybe we'll just contrast it up. So you'll see it get sharper across here. Yep, now the water comes along for the ride. So that's, yeah, it's really, really wicked. We can see like now that's that's gotten much sharper. Um, so yeah, this combination of um, micro detail and sharing masks and stuff is just like invaluable. So yeah, and we can see here's a render of um, the anchor using anchor points in IRA just to show all the sort of fine detail that we can achieve using using anchor points in this technique. So you can see yeah, all the detail around the, the lettering. We've got dirt accumulation and then the wider spread of rust. The rust is actually talking to here as if it was geometry, which is great. Um, down here we can see the mask that's driving the desaturation is also driving the wetness uh, mask so that they talk to each other. So that's really cool. And if we can, and this micro pitting um, that we added as well, that's all showing up nicely. So uh, yeah, cool. So that's kind of um, anchors in a nutshell. Now let's cover some more abstract uses for them because um, whilst well, you can see how powerful they are working with masks, there's also a lot of other kind of trippy things you can do with them. So let's jump over to the tile sampling material and I'll show you some cool tricks. Okay, trick number one is called paint offset. Um, this is really interesting because this was actually a question that had uh, come up from one of our artists. And um, she was wondering um, if it was possible to paint a stroke and then later offset it. Um, and it got us thinking like, hey, well, um, yeah, could probably do that with anchor points. So um, I've got a layer here set up and I will just duplicate this layer. Oops, sorry. Um, and in the mask, I'm going to create an anchor point. And then in here, I'm going to create a fill. I'm going to grab on it. You can also see this is a mask uh, layer that you're referencing because it's got the little mask icon. Normal anchors won't have this. Um, and there's also no options for which channel you want to use. So, um, and now we can say add a filter and then a transform. And I'm just going to randomly offset it in X and in Y. And now when we paint in here, we get two strokes. So that is cool in itself. Because um, this is also non-destructive, so you can take this and move it somewhere else if you want. Um, really, really cool. Um, something we, <laughs> we thought of was like, you could essentially paint stereoscopic images by hand like this because you could transform this like so and then if you paint something on the lower layer it almost gives you like a stereo like anaglyph effect um so yeah pretty cool trick number one offset painting well cool. trick number two embossed stitching so this is something i stumbled across while patching up um clothing for lara on the latest tomb raider film so this one's really cool i've used this on every bit of um clothing texture uh, that i've done recently so the idea is um i've got a brush we can create some stitches using the standard stitch brush like so let's just 
Let's do it around his tummy. Do okay. So we've got some stitches here, and the way I always do this now is I have a fill layer with some basic settings like just flat color, a pretty high roughness, and I've got my height set basically all the way up so that they they poke out. Um, and then obviously we can change the color of them or whatever we want. We'll leave them white for this. And then what I'll do is create an anchor point on the mask. That essentially gives us that. I'll make a new layer. Turn everything off except the height, because height is all I care about. And I'll drop the height all the way down to negative one. I'll create new mask, create a fill layer, reference the anchor point. Now we can see they're kind of fighting each other because we've got one layer going in and one layer going out. But what we're going to do now is blur this. So we're going to go add filter, blur. And you can see that's kind of given us this soft thing. And now you can see it looks like the stitches are actually digging into the fabric, which is really cool. So, and then we can adjust the, the width of it. If you go too far, it kind of disappears. So you have to be a little bit careful with it, but you can kind of see, um, yeah, once you've got this set up, um, make it a little bit smaller. Kind of works really well. It's a really kind of neat trick. You can see in here they're all indented. So, um, yeah, emboss stitching using anchor points. Trick number three converting color information to secondary map information. So, this is a really old school shading sort of trick where you pull the blue channel or the red channel or something from a bunch of mixed uh, maps to create like a quick bash, like roughness map or height map or something like that. Um, we kind of spoil it with Substance Painter in that we don't need to do that a lot, but sometimes it comes up like if we get a flat image from the client and we don't have any secondary maps, we have to project it straight on. We have to create you know, new secondary maps that tightly match what we've been given. So uh, just using this example, I've got like three noise patterns creating um, a new kind of base texture, but we've got no secondary, hypothetically, we've got no secondary uh, map. So what we can do is take all that stuff. Um, we'll turn all these channels off and make this a pass through, call this pass, and we'll add an anchor point on here. So what this is doing is essentially flattening out everything that's under here into a single layer. Um, now in a new layer that's above, we can turn off color and now we can start to populate the other channels um, using just the color information. So we'll start with roughness being the most obvious one. So we'll get the light so it sits right in the middle. Go to roughness, anchor points, select the pass through, and then the color channel, base color. And then we've also got the levels parameter. So we can you know, invert it, auto levels it. We'll grab this and just pull it up and we'll set like a base roughness or maybe we want it the other way around, you know. Um, oops. Maybe something like that. Um, Maybe our height channel, we want this to, to dig right in. So we'll grab the base color, take the levels, invert it. We can make it super crunchy and we'll just drop it down. Now you can see that's kind of like eaten in. So um, yeah, all sorts of possibilities with that. Um, but yeah, tip number three, converting color information to secondary map information. Alrighty, and the last trick for this video is turning mask information back into color information. So uh, this is super useful for a number of reasons as well. Um, sometimes you generate a mask and you're like, oh, I wish that was, you know, doing some effect 
um, later on, well, you can always reach back into a mask and grab it and um, colorize it. So um, we'll do that on the default machinery material. And what we're going to do is grab this layer um, and we're going to make it as if it's got some rust underneath, but then maybe some like illuminating acid or something on top of it. So um, I've got a mission turned on um, in the texture set. So let's first of all, because we're going to convert this back to color information and this is very binary, I'm going to add a couple of extra masks just to get some more gradation in there. So I'm going to add a fill layer and something like that. Right down. Yeah, so that's that's giving us some more kind of you can see it's going it's going to affect what's happening at this level, but we can adjust that after. Um, yeah, even that's good enough for now. Um, we'll add a new fill layer and all of these off. Um, let's create the anchor point. Under emission, we're going to select the anchor point so you can see. Yep, so that's like starting to glow now. And I'm going to add a mask so we can isolate that area as well. Oh, maybe we don't need to. We don't need to. Okay. Um, now we're going to add a filter. And under filters, we're going to select gradient, and this will allow us to colorize the, the black and white input coming in. So let's make the first range kind of no pink and then maybe green, something like that. And yes, we want the gradient to work on the emission channel. So we'll turn off color, turn on emission. And there we go. So we'll pull this down. You can see that's starting to affect those other areas now. Now, if I put this color up, it's going to glow everywhere. So the black is actually acting kind of a bit like a mask at this point. Now, what we can do, because the anchor point lives here, we can actually add stuff on top of this, and this is only going to look down. It's not going to look up. So how we're saying we're going to come back and fix the fact that we've lost the um, corrosion happening on the actual base material. Well, because we've got the anchor in the middle, now we can add another fill and we'll add something really chunky in. And crank that a little bit. That sort of gives you an idea. Um, so we're able to, to talk to both the materials. Cool. So I'm going to wrap it there for this video. Um, hopefully you guys have found it interesting and useful and um, hopefully it's inspired you to um, play around with anchors in different ways if you haven't been using them already. Hopefully um, you've got a good idea of how to start using them now and uh, hook up the micro detail mapping and stuff like that to um, to really tie your layering and materials together. So um, once again, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.